um, Dr. Siddiqui is here to talk to us um, about cool sculpting. This is not a CME um, activity this morning because um, our programs have to be free of commercial and financial bias. Um, but we did have requests from numerous providers to learn more about the cosmetic um, procedures that were being done because I know a lot of us have patients asking us about it. And so um, that's uh, why we're here this morning to learn for informational purposes. Um, I just wanted to, um, again, let you guys remind you about the CME for next week. If you haven't filled out the registration, please do so. Um, we're printing materials for that, so it helps us know numbers-wise, and we won't turn you away at the door, but we do need kind of a ballpark estimate as to um, numbers for how many to print for the materials that we're doing. So if you can fill out the registration, um, we would really appreciate that. So I'll turn it over to you this morning. Thanks. Well, thank you so much. Uh, you know, last week, a couple weeks, uh, 10 days ago, uh, I was asked, uh, and, and there's a lot of actually questions about the procedures that we are doing in the hotel. And <clears throat> I think the the vision that at least we see in women's health uh, here in Watertown is, in my opinion, <clears throat> a concept of uh, the traditional legacy world of women's health is medical care. We do contraception, we do obstetrical care, we do gynecologic care, uh, we do procedures. Uh, we wait for the patients to come to our doorstep. This is what we do. We have facilities, uh, uh, we have clinics, we have offices, we wait for patients to come and see us. As I mature and see and evolve and see the evolution of things, I also notice that this supply and demand situation as with anything else uh, around us. Um, we want things to be done instantaneously. We want things to have the answers, uh, questions answered very quickly. We want everything to be done at the same time. Uh, this is what our mentality is evolving into. We want answers, we want things to be done by one person. Uh, needs to be done efficiently. So I think the concept of uh, women's health as I see in the future of women's health as I see is not only the legacy part of the women's health that we always have been doing, but the things which our people are asking us and people would want to uh, be done on, on a regular basis. So wellness piece uh, uh, accompanied with uh, the medical piece, and the third piece is aesthetics. There is a growing number of people. It's not about 50s and 60s or 40s, late 40s. People are looking for aesthetic procedures. People are looking for aesthetic procedures in 20s. Um, I get uh, phone calls from 20-year-olds uh, that what can I do to take care of this uh, on a regular basis. So the idea is to what can we do at our place to provide such kind of services in one-stop shop. And not only that, but we get good at it and do it. So part of this, number one procedure, <clears throat> actually, uh, uh, invasive procedure in this country was liposuction. Back in the mid, till mid uh, 2000 and late, before, before 2004, 2005. After that, the number one procedure is breast augmentation. It's like unbelievable. That has transformed into breast augmentation. Body contouring um, is uh, what we call, uh, when we say liposuction, is removing the access tissue. And this requires anesthesia, that requires incision. Uh, that this, this, is, this is a minimal invasive procedure, but it's a procedure which requires anesthesia and surgery. And um, various modalities have been seen and uh, to see and remove excess uh, body fat. People have looked at doing it as is, is, uh, radio frequency energy. People are using ultrasound, ultrasonic energy to address uh, fat cells. Um, and people are using 
cool energy or cool, uh, which is called cryolipolysis. It is targeting fat cells with a controlled temperature, which causes uh, freezing of fat cells, crystallization of fat cells. And these crystallized fat cells are uh, removed from the body uh, by inflammatory reaction, initial acute inflammation, and then macrophages come in, and these macrophages remove the uh, apoptotic or dead uh, fat cells. Uh, that is the theory, but we really don't know how uh, cryolipolysis works. So we were doing uh, what is, and, and, and cryolipolysis is, Zeltik was the company which brought it cool sculpting. Now Zeltik has been sold to Allergan. Allergan, as you know, is uh, the manufacturer for Botox and other fillers as well. So um, uh, cool sculpting uh, was happening uh, before, um, and this was happening until Dr. Parkins, I think, left, um, which is about a year ago? No, uh, two years ago, maybe two years ago. And uh, so I thought that, uh, you know, since we are, we are giving this, uh, and we are getting a lot of these questions from who are the patients, who, who are the candidates, how does it work? Uh, and we have been addressing these questions uh, directly to the consumers, which is the patients, to doing cool events, uh, to the employees, uh, doing seminars over here. And I thought that we will share some of this information the reason this is not a CME activity because I'm presenting cool sculpting in itself from a commercial standpoint. But the way that I look at it is what is the evidence behind it? Uh, I can share some of the stuff, but for future purposes, if you're really interested, if you want to compare different uh, treatment modalities in removing excess fat cells from surgical uh, procedures to radio frequency energies to thermal uh, um, uh, event, uh, thermal uh, procedures uh, in which we are using cool and warm energies, we can discuss that as well. But today, I think I'm just going to briefly talk about cool sculpting and go from there. Questions so far? Okay, so, uh, and then, in the way that I see it, I, we are introducing, uh, we will be introducing what is called aesthetic uh, uh, gynecological procedures as well um, and in that there is a huge list of things that we can offer to people as well both now has the aesthetic role in it and also has uh, the treatment for medical purposes as well so that in another uh, session we would I would be able to uh, go through those uh, procedures as well um, so um, FDA cleared, uh, non-surgical uh, dying. The most important thing is that, you know, I got it done during my uh, lunch hour. This was this is what happens. You come in, get it done, go. Uh, there's no downtime. Um, there are no needles um, and lasting results. When you call lasting results, and I'm going to talk about lasting results, uh, uh, but the important thing is that five million procedures have been done so far. Um, it was introduced in 2004, 2005, um, uh, cleared by FDA in 2007, 2008. Uh, so it's been a while that uh, it has been there. But now recently, and since five years or so, there's a dramatic increase uh, as the results are coming, as people are looking um, at these results. So uh, non-invasive uh, way. Um, um, no downtime, no pre-op, no post-op uh, um, discomforts, and I'll talk about a little, a little bit on that. And uh, uh, it's a great way of doing it while you have a little bit of time, uh, free time to do it. Um, I think 19, uh, 2000, <coughs> 1970 was the time when uh, in popsicle-induced, <coughs> uh, um, popsicle-induced uh, uh, pediculitis which means people have used, seen that uh, uh, the kids who uh, use popsicles for teething purposes, um, they are case reports from 1970s or so, they saw that the kids develop dimples in their cheek. 
So lipid rich area uh, got targeted to cool temperatures more than the water rich areas in these kids developed uh, uh, dimples in their cheek. So this is where the term called cryolipolysis was coined in and that was the basis of having this procedure. Uh, also, case reports in early uh, uh, 1970s as well, that uh, um, different, you know, this is interesting in the same area, at the same time, uh, the reports came about when uh, women um, horseback riding during freezing temperatures noticed that there is significant reduction of fat cells in the thighs. So they seem to have nice thinner thighs, and especially in women um, who were riding these horses. So that is also, these were the case reports which were uh, published, and that was the basis of all of this. Uh, um, and how does it work? As I mentioned, uh, most of us actually uh, develop or the maximum number of fat cells by adolescence. Um, so these fat cells, when we gain weight, uh, <coughs> gain in the size, and when we lose weight, they go to the size of these fat cells. That's what happens. The number of fat cells remain the same. Uh, so I think what happens is that when you target, and, and, and it's interesting to see that when you provide cool temperatures, the lipid-rich areas actually uh, respond to cool temperatures differently as compared to water-rich areas. And if you target these cells, these fat cells crystallize, as I mentioned, and they, uh, are, they ultimately die and be cleared, by, uh, about to, uh, cleared up by macrophages by three months or so. So when they are removed permanently, you're, not, you're removing these cells permanently. You're not increasing or decreasing the size of the cells. So that is an important principle that we need to know. Um, Different areas, uh, fat is evenly distributed. Um, as I mentioned, um, these fat cells are el eliminated for good. Um, we, have, um, we are doing um, these procedures actually in different parts of the body. Uh, it, the it's, it's FDA has cleared uh, to remove unwanted excess fat cells in the abdomen, uh, in the uh, medial thighs, the lateral aspect of the thighs, in the um, flank areas, the upper and lower flank areas, uh, it has been uh, approved for submental area now. Excellent result with submental area, double chin that we call. Um, and uh, um, the banana rolls, which we say that you, you have these uh, accumulation fat just underneath the gluten region and the bra fat, just the fat underneath the um, bra. I think these are the areas, the targeted areas, that we have used uh, very successfully in reducing the um, water fat. Um, you, what do you do, initial results, when you do the procedure? Uh, the procedure is done by an applicator, and we'll talk about it, um, but the, the initial results are within the first four to six weeks you start noticing it, the maximum results out of about three months or so. Um, and as long as you maintain your weight, uh, adequate uh, right nutrition and exercise, you'll keep these areas uh, free of this uh, forever. Um, what, what does it intake actually? It intakes is that we uh, evaluate what needs to be uh, targeted, and what uh, troubles the patients. We do the evaluations. I do the assessments uh, free. Uh, of any charges, these are free consultations. We assess, assess the goals um, of the patient, um, and then develop a treatment plan for the patient. Each patient has an individualized treatment plan, depending on what the goals and the outcomes that people are looking into, depending on the areas that they are looking into, because the various applicators are being used the sizes and the shapes of the applicators are dependent on which part of the body that we are working and also is dependent on uh, how much, what are the outcomes that you're looking at. 
if you're just looking at uh, size less than what you're wearing, if you're looking at complete removal of uh, the uh, unwanted fat that you have tried by multiple, uh, for many years by doing exercise, I think it is dependent on exactly what needs to be done. The applicators that we have is old applicators. The applicators that we have requires one hour treatment cycle. The new applicators which are just came on the market about a year, year and a half, two years ago, they're 35 minute cycles. Uh, people are also doing dual sculpting, which means they do target these areas by addressing both areas of the abdomen or the upper and lower extremities at the same time and reducing the treatment times from an hour to first 35 minutes and then dual. So you get the entire abdomen done in 40 minutes. That's amazing. Uh, versus two hours or versus four hours if you're treating four areas as well. So there's a rapid um, uh, improvement uh, continues to have improvement in technology. During uh, the treatment, you, uh, you know, it, it requires, except for uh, certain areas which are the outer thighs, the main, the two mechanisms, you create the vacuum of the tissue that you are treating and then you cool it. Um, and the cool temperatures target the underlying fat. The most common question that I get, does it affect frostbite to my skin? The answer is no, because the target, we provide uh, protectant to the skin. As I mentioned, the cool temperatures target the lipid rich area more than the water rich area. There are sensors which actually are in the applicator which senses the thermal injury and stops the cycles as a built in mechanism. Uh, and uh, the complication rates are minimal. Uh, and I'm going to talk about complication rates as well, but they're minimal. So that's the reason the vacuum that it's created uh, gives you a little bit of tugging, pulling sensation just for a minute when the uh, vacuum is applied. We start the process of cooling. Within two minutes or so, you start feeling the cool temperatures. And after that, uh, once it reaches to the point of freezing, uh, you don't even feel that there's an applicator in place. And then you do what you need to do. People watch TV. People do work. Uh, and do uh, go to sleep, actually. I take a nap. <coughs> so this is what we have been seeing. So um, I think that is. Uh, the, the day we usually do not need, patients do not need to have any pain medications before or after to tolerate, you know, um, I was sore um, in the area in the abdomen for at least uh, two, two and a half weeks to the point where I, as if I've done uh, a thousand uh, uh, push-ups, uh, you know, I think that's what uh, uh, what was what was the feeling? It's a little bit sore when you touch it. You feel numbness um, for at least two to three weeks or so, and then that goes uh, away. Who are the patients who are not the candidates for the procedure? Um, the, uh, the patients who, especially in this area, usually you don't find those patients which have cold-induced anemias or uh, cryoglo uh, cold uh, cry cryoglobinemia cold urticarias, uh, um, I think those are the patients that we don't do it. Obviously, if you have an active uh, dermatitis, if you have an active lesion on the skin, we don't want to do that in that area. So nearly, um, you can get it done. Now I'm doing it on 75-year-olds uh, with multiple abdominal surgeries as long as there's no obvious big mental hernias or uh, uh, abdominal hernias. We don't want to have the suction back to apply to a hernia. But uh, we are doing all kinds of uh, uh, procedures in all ages, actually, now. Um, so I think there's the, the most important thing is that there's no real pain or discomfort or uh, post-treatment requirements for any analgesics. Um, some mental area. I'm just going to show some pictures. Um, OK, and the other thing is, um, People, the other question that I get, how many treatments do I need? It says times two treatment in some mental area. What literature has suggested, and I'm going to show you one single study, actually, which suggests that 
the most co common question that how much fat would you take off from this? Uh, the question is that we don't measure. We take pictures. The caliper measurements have not been the right way of doing it because it is dependent on where you're taking it, how much are you taking it, exactly what areas are you measuring it. Um, what studies have suggested is anywhere between 15 to 25 percent to 28 percent reduction of fat volume in that area uh, measured by ultrasound and measured by <coughs> clipper me measurements uh, in studies. Uh, we don't do it uh, in reality in, in real patients. But somewhere between, I would say, between 20 to 25 percent reduction. In certain areas, there are just few studies right now which says that if you do multiple procedures, if you do a second procedure, would you further reduce the fat in that area? There are newer studies which are coming which suggest that the uh, areas that we address, in certain areas, it would affect more. In abdomen, second or third procedures do have further reduction of, of volume. <coughs> If you're looking, but certain areas, um, in for example, bra fat, flanks, you don't have much uh, improvement uh, in the number of cycles as well. So the best bet remains your torso, uh, in front of the torso, the abdomen, upper and the lower abdomen. The um, what we are also seeing the results in the flank areas, and I'm going to show you some pictures, um, actually do very, very well. Quick results within within four to six weeks. Um, the three people that work in our clinic had two people who did it in the upper and lower flanks uh, said that within four weeks they started wearing uh, um, uh, stuff that they never felt comfortable wearing and completely uh, removed uh, those areas. So um, hopefully in the next four to six weeks I'm going to show you some real pictures for our patients as well. The so submental area, this is times two treatment. Um, Again, uh, that's the treatment after four, uh, after twelve weeks. Uh, medial thighs, uh, medial arms, upper arms. Um, eight weeks after the maximum results are about twelve weeks or so. Um, abdomen. Um, this is what we are showing um, how the first treatment and how the second treatment resulted uh, in the results for this patient. Um, as well. So first treatment usually is done four weeks. Uh, the second treatment you can actually do it after four weeks uh, because of the inflammatory response which goes away. The completely it goes away in three months. But the acute inflammatory response is around four weeks or so uh, finishing of that initial response. So after the four weeks you can actually do the second treatment or second round of treatments as well. Um, the same thing is there. This is depends on how we are addressing which tissue planes are we going to look, how are we going to sculpt this abdomen, how treatment uh, needs to be done uh, by not just applying with one big uh, uh, applicator, but how we are applying actually in uh, um, contouring the abdomen. Eight weeks after the procedure. Again, uh, this is uh, 12 weeks after the procedure, after the first and the second treatment cycle. So um, I think this is this is really good. This I have actually seen within six weeks here, and not only in one patient now, uh, and from our clinic, and also some of the patients that we have done in the hospital. This is just amazing results. Um, these are just the results in different areas. The medial thighs, I think what we are seeing is that a lot of these patients that I'm seeing is the back, it irritates my thighs when they rub against each other, I don't, I can't uh, exercise, it's just, uh, it's just not right. And to create that distance between the two thighs uh, has been amazing. We have done now three patients, four patients actually, um, and have got very good results on medial thighs as well. So these are all medial thighs, creating that distance between the thighs. <coughs> uh, out of thighs. I, I like this because I think uh, what is important, who are the candidates for the out of thighs? 
uh, out of eyes are the areas which uh, I'm just going to mention it here is where you see the bump of the outer thighs and if you want to treat the whole thing you can treat the medial thighs and the outer thighs at the same time and get the results as well. Uh, we call this a banana roll, it's just below the neutral region, treatment of those areas. Uh, distal thighs. Um, I have, we have done now in women's health at least uh, four, uh, three or four uh, uh, males uh, and great results. Creating the abdomen, again, we need to see. Um, so in, in a year later, um, and this is important, this, this was the case that we uh, have always looked at asymmetry in, 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 in two areas. Um, this picture, and as we are reading through the picture through this one, we see that this uh, gentleman gained some weight uh, six years later. And the area which was treated on this side, which is a flag which is on the left side, actually had lesser uh, gain of weight in that area as compared to the previous one. There's a lot of buzz. Every morning that you see the, there's a show, there's a commercial, there's a lot of things on Cool Sculpting right now. Um, one, I would want to uh, show you uh, just a glimpse, and I can show many papers actually on it now. This is a nice uh, review came in, um, in reviewing the uh, 319 articles, and they picked up 19 studies, which were uh, majority of them retrospective, but there were uh, at least four of them were prospective studies. They measured. Uh, uh, and they did the ultrasound measurements, they reported somewhere between 15 to 30 percent reduction of, uh, of fat cells uh, in there. Uh, there is a term called paradoxical adipose hyperplasia. Instead of reducing the fat, you actually cause hyperplasia of the fat <coughs> by cool temperature. A reported incidence is one in a million. Extremely rare. Um, so, but this was, uh, this was there, was described in one patient, um, and there is what the uh, uh, review uh, resulted was that it's, it's a great alternative to a liposuction right now. This is just the beginning. I think we will see this tremendously grow. Liposuction is going to go away. <laughs> as simple as that. Surgical procedure is going to go away. So I just gave an overview of what uh, what are what can we do. It is not an obesity treatment. So if someone is thinking that I would do this and lose 20 pounds of weight, the weight is from the muscle. It's not so important things. Two or three important things: visceral fat. I will not be able to remove the visceral fat. So bariatric patients, if you do a laparoscopy, they have this thick omentum. Like, it is, the momentum is everywhere. I'm not going to treat it. I can't treat that. So she's going to keep that. So the doughy feeling in the abdomen is going to be there. So I just saw two patients yesterday, before yesterday, they had pediatric surgery. And they want, they've reduced about 100 pounds of weight. They were 350, 375 pounds. Now they are 250 pounds. And I felt and I assessed, and there is a doughy feeling. There's a visceral fat there. Uh, which I can't treat, but there are areas that I can treat and, and tell them that this is how it's possible. I saw a patient yesterday, day before yesterday, she's four feet uh, two inches, and uh, she lost 120 pounds. She's got a huge uh, 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 panis which hangs up to the uh, mid upper uh, thigh, and she uh, is desperate to get it removed. I said, look, I can't remove the excess skin, but the weight of that fat, which is present, the subcutaneous fat, we can reduce it, but you need to have surgical removal of this excess fat. 
So the weight we can reduce it, the volume that we can reduce in the septicus tissue, but we can't remove the excess tissue. So visceral fat, I can't remove. Excess skin, I can't remove. Not a weight reduction uh, 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 procedure. Uh, the weight comes from the muscle. So you weigh the same amount, volume of fat, and you weigh the same amount of muscle, muscle is very heavy from the fat. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, so I think that is uh, what uh, we see um, so far. So questions? So if you're not affecting the visceral fat, does that mean that it doesn't then lead to better uh, metabolic numbers? In terms of so, so there are three big studies now on this which suggest that people who have great results do not change in me their metabolic profile at all, at all. So there's no cholesterol, lipid, triglycerides, albumin, uh, does not change. Is it covered by the insurance or is it? Zero coverage by insurance. <laughs> How much, <laughs> How How much, much does cost? it cost? Yeah. So again, cost-wise, it, <laughs> it is dependent on what area are we treating, what applicator we are treating, how many treatments are we ongoing? It comes from a small two applicator uh, area where I usually treat abdomens in a diamond shape. So you need four treatments. Now you need to have maximum applicator, which is times two of a normal applicator, then a normal single applicator. So it is dependent on how much area that I need to treat, what applicators that are treating, how many rounds that, uh, this woman, who's a psychologist, here in this, not in this area, close by, uh, was reviewing this cool sculpting for the last two years. And she said, look, I want to buy 25 cycles. She bought 25 cycles, oh, each okay. cycle is 600 bucks. Uh, so she want, she bought 25 cycles. She said, look, uh, we will give you this much discount, obviously, whatever the discount is. But I want to have it done in the next one year, everything possible. So we'll treat her flanks, upper flanks, mid thighs, uh, upper uh, arms, needle thighs, out of, we'll treat everything. So, she, so the treatment, what someone wants to have it done, is dependent on what you're doing. So the average abdomen, like you showed, some of those. Uh, for things. one round of treatment, uh, can be anywhere between what right now what we are giving to employees twenty five percent off. It's like unheard of. You can't cool sculpting cannot let us advertise uh, less than a certain number. They would not. So a treatment cycle, for example, six hundred. They would not let us advertise less than five hundred. Uh, so one application. So what? An average abdomen, if I do a, 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 core, a, a, a diamond shape, one round costs somewhere around, I would say, between 2,000 to 2,200. When you say one round, what do you mean by that? So one round meaning one round of that targeted area. So that can be targeted area with the whole abdomen, so which means four applications. Are you saying you can do four applications at once of 35? One, so, so, so if I have a dual like sculpting. You do one for 35, one for 35. One yeah. For 35. So this is not 35. We have one hour. Oh, okay. So if you have four applications, of four hours of work. Okay. So someone who did eight hours. So I did the entire abdomen and entire flank. So four applications in the afternoon and four in the back. So she came in 7.30 in the morning, let five, five o'clock in the evening. So you said if you do the diamond shape and then the four flanks, flanks that would be that would be how much cost? <laughs> Again, it's, it's, I'm not real clear on. I just, so cost it. is dependent. Look, I have. Yeah. But I mean that would be this would be an appropriate <laughs> yeah. treatment diamond, or are we also are you going to need to do? Because you had a picture up there yeah. that showed the cross the belly yeah. and then the four of yeah. the four quadrants. Yes. Yeah. So it would is that be typical. It is no okay. typical is usually a diamond shaped. Okay. And usually, but okay. if you've got a large volume, I can't cover gotcha. it. Is a smaller. I need to use the maximum, okay. which is nine inches versus four inches. 
so nine inch treatment in areas and then I need to see how can I cover and how much reduction roughly I can say that look this is what you would want you would want probably three rounds of treatment gotcha okay okay that makes more sense yeah so people this is a typical question how much would it cost without me evaluating mm -hmm. it, it is like impossible for yeah. me to say that this is what would you but do. no that helps so right. you say you're going to need you know average volume right. three sessions okay that's that gives me an idea two sessions is usually two rounds is usually uh what i what you need mm -hmm. usually but if someone has just minimal uh for example uh, um, bra fat and upper and low flanks um, some people just have difficulty wearing a bra or a bikini suit, you know, just one treatment. I've seen great results. Okay. Do you give the initial consult is free or is it free? Free. That's what it is? Mm -hmm. That's the, that's that the idea. You assess it, tell yeah. them how much. Yes. I think uh, when he asked a question, it drew me off a little bit. Yes. Because I'm listening to the diamond shape. Yes. Is that considered one treatment, one cycle? No, so diamond shade has one cycle if you want to take care of four different areas of okay. the abdomen. Each area will be one hour application. So if I'm using four applications for first round, uh -huh. it's going to be four hours. Okay, so I'm just trying to figure out four treatments. So then that would be the baseline price for, for whatever four first treatments. Ap first round of the treatment which requires four, four. Okay. applications. So that's where you like you say, ballpark estimate, where you're coming up with ballpark, 200, yeah. uh, not 200, I mean $2,500 ballpark. Yes. Yes. Okay. How about the results compared to, I think it's iLipo or? It's yeah, so iLipo is uh, actually is not, uh, it is for athletes, what I remember, what I know. It's for, um, it's you go into a pool chamber, chamber actually, um, if that is the right, I, which I like for you talking about? I've just read about it's an application, an ultrasound sort of thing for belly fat thing. Right. So these are now. I'm going to show you uh, in a little. I have a table which shows the ultrasonic, the radio frequency, the heat, and the, the cool. Uh, they're counting more or less the same results. Um, I have found the most literature on cold temperatures rather than radio frequency and all that So that has been in the non-invasive world. This has been the longest since 2006, 2007 or so. So I have more literature to suggest that this, when I'm saying 25%, I'm saying 25% of by literature, what is some people do it more. So they're touting more or less the same. They're talking about 10 to 15% reduction. Of, uh, of, uh, I have a question. Years out yes. after this, yes. are there any reports of damage to so skin no, or no hardening skin, or anything No skin, like that? Uh, no permanent damage. Yes, you have a little bit of numbness that goes on for about four weeks or so. I had it for four weeks and it just goes away completely. Uh, a paradoxical uh, hyperplasia of the adipose tissue, very rare. But that is uh, one in a million patients are talking And no about. Uh, indication of damage to the underlying organs. No. No. So um, there is a growing interest, uh, and my thing is to read as much as possible and to get as much literature as possible, and to, to, uh, to counsel patients appropriately. It is a service that people are looking for. <laughs> That's the way that I see it. Is there merit? The answer is yes. Can we do it safely? The answer is yes. How effective it is, it is dependent on what you're looking for. If you think that you would want to have a six pack, I'm gonna show my pictures actually before and after in the next session. Uh, and so, um, so I think that's where that I, I, I see it. Thank you. When you said the second and third rounds are less efficacious? No, so they are efficacious in certain areas. So abdomen being the most highly efficacious. So in the next session that you guys are ever interested is to use use of the platelet-rich plasma, uh, PRT, uh, actually not only in skin treatments, but we are hopefully going to do it for atrophic vaginitis, for lichen sclerosis, 
and orgasmia, full shot treatments. Now this is a big thing now. Uh, everyone is asking for OSHA. Then there is major OSHA. OSHA is actually you inject uh, uh, PRP uh, into the anterior part of the vagina and also in the clitoral area for people who have no, uh, an orgasm. Okay. Uh, there's treatments for lichen sclerosis and uh, there's treatment now people are talking about the tropic vaginitis as well. So specific, uh, they, they, these are, you can't call these OSHA treatments unless I'm your credential to do it. Now it's a nap realm. <laughs> people have to pay, people have to go and get credentials and then start doing the procedure. So these are the areas. Cosmetic gynecology, which includes Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa is the actual treatment of the vagina for skin tightening in the vagina. There's a rapid growth of that uh, is happening as well. So again, this is an area which is rapidly growing. So hopefully we can introduce some of that as well. Scar revisions. So what we, we will be starting to do is that we will microneedle that space in that area and inject PRPs. Uh, so that is a great treatment option. We don't have scar uh, uh, stria of the pregnancy. Uh, we don't have any treatment for that. If it's less than six months, the scars are immature. They are best treated by microneedling and PRPs as well. So there's a lot of things which are coming up that we'll be offering. So I'm hoping that as time goes on, I can introduce some of this stuff uh, if you're interested uh, to let you guys know. Thank you.